about some people who were ruthlessly murdered by a foreign governor in the gospel today, and then Jesus follows it up by telling a story about 18 people who were killed when a building collapsed on them. Yes, it almost seems like we're reading headlines from one of our own newspapers. <laughs> Jesus uses these stories about people being tragically killed to make a point. And the point he makes is that the people who died were no worse sinners than anyone else. The people who died were no worse sinners than anyone else. I think we know that's true. I know we know it's true. But sometimes I think when things start to go wrong and tragedy hits and we're struck by really overwhelming events, that idea that we are being punished for our sins or someone else or some other people are being punished for their sins starts to lurk in the back of our minds. And I think it's because it's a quick remedy to explain the difficulty that we're facing. It's a quick fix, if you will. But here in this Gospel, Jesus makes it very, very clear that human suffering is not the result of divine punishment for sin. You might recall in John's Gospel, Jesus also makes that same point. You might remember that scene where he is approached by his disciples about a man that Jesus is with who has been born blind. And his disciples say, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? And what did Jesus say? Neither. Neither sinned. So in that story, in the gospel we just heard, Jesus is really severing that link between universal suffering and sin, and says, you got to lose it. That is not the case. Now, I don't want you getting too excited here. Now, that's not to say that certain actions of ours don't have consequences, right? We all know that many of the actions of our lives have serious consequences. If, for example, we choose to live our life in an unhealthy and reckless way, chances increase that we're not going to be in this world too long and not live as long as other people. But that has nothing to do with God punishing us. Certain governments may act in destructive or totalitarian ways. Things blow up. People are taken advantage of. Bad consequences, but that has nothing to do with God punishing anyone. I hear Jesus say in this gospel, my friends, life is vulnerable and life is really risky. And each of us, each of us, is just a weird, random act away from having our life snuffed out through absolutely no fault of our own. And because of the precarious nature of life, I also hear Jesus saying, make sure you live your life wisely, make sure you live your life fully. Live it, he says, being connected to the source of all life, which is God, so that God might bring out in you that which is good, that which is compassionate, that which is kind, and that which is love. And I think that is what the parable of the fig tree reminds me of. Now, some people, when they read this parable, immediately assume that well, God must be the landowner, and Jesus is the gardener who's jumping in and interceding on our behalf uh, with a very cranky landowner who is out to pull up this poor fig tree. It's the idea that Jesus is always kind of shielding us from a God who is angry or a God who is trying to do something to us. 
And Jesus is saying, don't, hold on, hold on, give me a little time, I can fix this situation, I can make this tree better, I can help these people, give me some time. The problem is that nowhere, absolutely nowhere in the Gospel of Luke do we find any inkling of an angry God who would do something like that. I'm an angry God that somehow Jesus would have to placate or intercede on our behalf. We never get a picture of that in the Gospel of Luke. Instead, in the Gospel of Luke, we need a God who is like the Father in the story of the prodigal son, which you all are going to hear next week, by the way. But you remember that Father, don't you? You remember that story. You know how it goes. The son completely, well, basically he wants to, he wishes his father was dead and runs off with all the money. And what does the father do? Day and night, he scans the horizon, looking for a lost child. That's what he's doing. He's just looking and looking. And when that day comes, he spots his son off in the distance, and long before that kid has any idea that his dad has seen him, the story tells us the father starts to run. To run right to him. That's the God that we meet in the gospel. That's the God. A God who pursues us, a God who looks for us, and doesn't set time limits on us, and doesn't seem at all concerned about waiting for us. One commentator I read, David Loos, suggests that in this parable, it might be considered, not be good to consider God not as the landowner, but how about thinking about God as the gardener? God is the gardener. God who is digging around that tree with love and care, bringing forth fruit. God who is throwing a little manure on it. God who is digging around us and caring for us. Maybe tossing a little manure on us. I leave that to you to decide what that manure might be. <laughs> but it is manure thrown in love, I assure you. It is rich and tender of love and care that this gardener shows to this tree. Doesn't that gardener sound more like God to you? That's the gardener I know. That's the God I know. So, what about the person who wants to rip that tree out and get rid of it? That person who is frustrated and angry at times. Well, one commentator I read said, maybe that person who is impatient and wants to rip up that tree is us. You. Me. We are often too quick to give up on our own selves. We're not only quick to give up on our hopes and dreams, but often we are too quick to give up seeing what is good and holy in our lives. We are quick to give up seeing what is good and holy in the lives of other people. We are quick to give up and see what is good and holy in the world around us. We are quick to give up. Indeed, the voice in our head that tells us how worthless we are, or how worthless other people are, or how hopeless this world we live in, sounds awfully close to the voice that threatens to uproot and cast away that barren tree in the gospel. Perhaps in the story today, Jesus is reminding us that life is 
unpredictable. It's very tenuous. But nonetheless, this life is a wonderful gift from God. Make the most of it. Because God is seeking to help you do good work. God is cultivating you. God is caring for you so that you and I might bring forth good fruit in our life. So that we might be people of love, people of compassion, people of forgiveness and kindness, people who seek fairness and justice. So that we might be people who, like Jesus, walk through this very tenuous, very unpredictable world, bringing light and hope to all who he met. Amen.